Oh, we're so excited to see your guys' comments and questions and just be with you guys live. It's super fun. All right. Simon, come here. Simon. Do you want to say hi? Me. Yeah, that's you. He said me. You're good. Who are all those people back there? <laughs> He's like, that's a lot of people. I see. Dada. Oh, you that's see Dada? Dada? Good job. You see Dada? Dada? Yeah. Dada, where's Mama? I see you there. Oh, yeah. He wave hi. Hey. Hi. Hi. So, Simon, how are you liking preschool? Is it good? Is preschool good? He's kind of mystified by all the cameras and stuff. <laughs> but preschool's actually going really well. And you can always tell by the second day when he runs in. He, he really likes it. It's super right, fun. Let's switch and have... Okay, I've got Ezra now. Ezra, come here, honey. Hey, Yay! Yay! Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Don't turn. Don't turn. Yeah. Is it, say hi? It's kind of a cramped spot right here, huh? You say hi? Yep. You've got your sippy cap. With your meal replacement. Shake in it. Yeah. Hi. Um, it. Yeah, you can get my phone. Yep. Who are these people? Are they going to talk to us? us? Oh, look, we've got comments and questions. Yes, so if you have a question that we want, that you want us to answer, put it in and we'll answer it. Let's say hi. 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 You just want that. He's just holding a seven head shirt. He really likes seven head shirts. Daddy, we go with Gumbo. All right. Let's go bye bye. Let's go bye bye. These guys are gonna go to the park right now. Is that what you want to go to the park? Want to go to the park? Okay, Ezra needs his shoes and socks on. Murray, you want to help do that? Okay, step over the cord. Yeah, very good job. Good job. Good job. Okay, Benson, please take Ezra. And All right, bye bye. Shoes on. Bye. Thank you. Here's the. <laughs> Forgot his drink. All right, awesome. So we're trying to get comments. How does Simon like preschool? Julia Owens asks. Um, he actually does really like it. I can tell because, like I said before, we brought him the second time, and he just ran right in. And he's gone three times so far. And so it's just twice a week right now. It kind of help ease him into it, and then in the fall he'll go four days a week. And I was a little worried at first because it is, it's a long day for him. It's all, it's all, it's like a school day. It's all day. Um, but he is loving it, and they're really good at, like like taking the kids and doing lots of recesses. They have like this quiet time where they put on music and put the lights down. And then each kid has a mat. So they're all separate and they can like get a stuffed animal or a pillow. They have weighted blankets so they can like take a little nap if they want to. She said mostly kids don't actually fall asleep, but all of them will like, will just like snuggle with a blanket or lay down and have kind of like a nap and I feel like with a long day like that and you have all these activities and and they work with them and they read with him they're doing a lot of help with you know he right now he's learning um color shapes numbers letters things like that so I think he really loves it they do a good job there and we're really excited because he actually, they also do three times potty there, right? Yes. So, so they take all the kids and there's lots of aids that help. So there's like seven adults there and about 10 to 12 kids. And so the ratio is really good. So they can give that one on one time and they have this bathroom with little toilets and they just sit everyone down you know, in, in their own <laughs> spot, but um, help the kids that way. And so then it doesn't become like this, oh, I'm the only one who has to own potty. Like, you're just picking on me. It's like, oh, everyone does this. So this is normal, right? So. And Ezra, when he was in that preschool, because Ezra went to that preschool as well, and he actually was doing better with potty during that, that was probably the best. Yeah. And I think it's that peer... Um, peer pressure or... <laughs> Like, everybody's doing this, and this is normal, and the potties are small, and it's easy. I don't know. He did. He got used to it, yeah. But then when we went, we went into the RV, he, we stopped potty training, and that's, that. yeah. Now we're trying to potty train again, and it's just a little harder, because yeah. he's like, wait a minute. I thought we just did this for a little while. We're doing this again, so just, I don't know if that was the best, but. <laughs> yeah, well, and I mean, he, he never... 
figured it out completely or anything. It was more of just luck, but when, it, when he was going, but it's, it's a work in progress for sure. So yeah. let's see what we have here. Oh, have you ever thought of an autism service dog? I have actually thought about service dogs a lot. Um, we both love dogs. The, the place that we, I don't know, we just have excuses, I guess, for not getting a service, service dog. First of all, like, pets are, like, a lot of work. And right now I'm just, like, I don't know if I could give what you need to to a pet. <laughs> but a service dog, I'm sure they would love it. And we need to look into that more, yeah. I feel like if we lived, like, more in the country, not the city, where, like, a dog could just, like, run around and stuff, but... We do have a good backyard, though we've lost that excuse as it, far as, like, not having... I mean, in the RV, no. <laughs> yeah, that, that wouldn't work for us. We barely had enough room for... Five kids in the, the RV kids was... I know, but... Uh, not that you can't take a dog in the RV, it's just that, you know, we were already seven people, so... It was, yeah, it was, it was a full house. I actually had this conversation with my mom just, like, last week um, about, like, because my sister just got a dog, and she's trying to train the dog, and the dog's a puppy, and the dog, like, got in a fight with the neighborhood dog, and it was traumatic, and it wasn't good. Not, like, traumatic, but it was it was really hard, and I'm like, yeah, dogs, they're a lot of work, and you want to give... You need to give them the attention that they need, and so I'm just like, I, I would fail. The dog would not be walked. I would forget to feed the dog. I would, and I'd feel bad. I don't know. That's. I feel like that's what would happen. What do you think, Mark? Are you ready to be a, have a dog and uh, take the responsibility? Yeah, and that's just well, it. I mean, maybe if I quit my full-time job. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's been helping me do uh, construction a bunch this summer, so he's. Uh, yeah. He's been working hard. So we've been doing... He's been doing awesome. Building decks and remodeling houses and stuff like that. And it's been super busy keeping these kids busier than probably they want. But they've been making some good money too, right? <laughs> All right. Next question is Ezra. Is Ezra still using his communication device? Yes, we use it every day. Um, and he's the things that he uses it for he's more it are just the things that motivate him more. Like to say that he's done doing something, he'll say all done. If he's, if we are sitting him on the potty, then he's watching a movie, he'll go to it and say all done. He's like, okay, I'm all done with this. And, or he'll say, go outside. He'll, those are the main ones. And then string cheese. <laughs> um, those are the main ones he knows exactly where they are. Right now we're trying to um, expand his use of the device and put in um, family members. So there's a picture of each family member. And if he clicks on mom, it says mom. If he clicks on Marie, it says Marie. And so he's, we've been working on that. Um, he still doesn't use it that way, but it'll come because he's learning. Yeah. His therapists are using it with him every day. That's part of his, uh, programs mm -hmm. is to just really, um, try and focus on that as a communication. Like it's his main communication at this point to help him if I want something, I need to go to this device and I need to push the right button and, and that's how I can get yeah. what I want. So it's still very much a work in progress. His um, ADHD has been kind of difficult as of late to get him to calm down enough to do that. He's had a lot of energy and it's hard for him to focus lately. And we don't really know why exactly. We've tried different medications and the medications just really make him more docile and so like and not as happy and so it's hard to and we we miss our happy kid because you guys know on the videos like Ezra is so happy all the time and so even though he can focus more and he does focus more and use he uses his device more and stuff when he's when he's medicated on and we've tried different things different ones and different amounts and stuff but it's it's still sad when he's sad I don't know so, we yeah, so we're, we're still working on that. We probably better go in order, otherwise we're going to get... Oh, I thought we were going in order. Oh, I don't know if you have been, but I haven't been... I've been, I've been you've coming You've been paying order. attention? Okay. Does, yeah, so I'm like preschool, the audio is great. Okay, good. Have you thought about service dog? And then, hi from Costa Rica, from Canada. Ooh, these are cool. Um, what grade is Ezra going into? He's going into the second grade. And... I have autism also. Awesome. Ezra, and he's 
so, but as of right now, he's just going to, he just has in-home therapists right now. Who we, yes, we're trying to get him potty trained. So he's not um, going to an actual school right now. Yeah, he was doing in-clinic. Um, and so it's kind of like a school, even though it is a lot of therapy and it's one-on-one. And so we would take him to his clinic, but it's like 25 minute drive and he wasn't learning how to potty train very well. So we thought, you know, if we bring him home, then maybe it would just be easier for him. So we're still trying to work him on that. (laughs) Yeah. Our goal is to get him potty trained by Christmas and right now it's summer and we're still working on it. (laughs) Maybe it'll be next Christmas. I don't know, (laughs) but we're not giving up. Um... Let's see. Can you do... <laughs> Someone's saying that they wanted us to play this game. It sounds like a cute game. We're not ready to play it, though. Maybe you, we should do this next time. Can you blindfold test? Do the blindfold taste taste test. So you uh, blindfold yourself and then, and then see, can you taste something? It's like a fun game like, to do live. That's a good idea. We should do that with the kids live some other time okay maybe next week we'll do the blindfold taste challenge that'd be good all right we already talked about preschool a little bit um we still using this communication device it's funny when we scroll down it <laughs> it actually moves how do i email oh how do you mail us we have an address we need to put don't we have our address somewhere that yeah. you can see I can put it in the chat here. Yeah, we'll put our address in the chat because we would love to get mail from you guys. It'll be fun. Um, is pre is does preschool offer him a speech therapist? Yes, the preschool that he goes to, he gets speech. But I'm gonna be honest with you, it's it's not really speech. <laughs> it's like it's enough speech that they could put on the on his IEP that oh he's getting so many minutes a day, but it's not it's not like. For example, the speech therapist is really awesome and really nice, and she'll just read a story to them and then have them each like repeat words back. Um, and so she'll do a little bit of speech with them, but she'll also count the whole time as the minutes, and she'll only talk to my child like twice. And so I, I like to go in there and see what's really happening because, and this happens all the time, on the IEP it looks like your child's getting all these minutes of a certain therapy but go in and check and see what it really looks like. Because it says, oh, he's getting 20 minutes of therapy every day. And I'm like going, oh, that's great, 20 minutes of speech. And I'm thinking in my head that's one-on-one speech therapy, but it's it's actually not. It's her in front of the entire classroom. And she might ask a couple questions to each kid the whole time. And so it's great. I'm glad that we have it, but it's not, it's not super, I don't know. I'd, li- I'd like to do more speech with him. That, but the therapists that come to the house, we are constantly doing speech therapy with, with him that way. So that's good. Um, so we'll probably also, when Simon's doing um, his preschool, do, are we going to do more um, therapy after school too? Yeah. Or? Yeah. When In the fall, when he starts more uh, four days a week, he'll do a session of therapy every day when he gets back. And so it'll be a full day for him. He's going to be so tired by the end of the day. And Friday, too? or Yes. And Friday, too? Yeah. Why wouldn't we include Friday? Well, no, I, that'd be great. Just saying if they, yeah. if they can. Yeah, they're going to do it Monday through Friday. And then he'll do school from Tuesday through Friday. That's how the school works. Cool. Yeah. Sorry, we had to set out that clarification in front of you guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to communicate as a couple. It's good. Good stuff. Um, let's see what's the next one. Does Ezra do homeschool now? Yes, it is kind of like a homeschool. The therapists come and they do speech therapy, occupational therapy. They do a lot of different therapies with them. They include music a lot, um, to motivate him. And we used to do music. I used to do music therapy with him when he was smaller. Um, but we do that all at home right now because we're really, we're working on those functional skills like using the toilet (laughs) it's important um hi 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 what else um preschool offers some speech therapist because my son okay cool so because my son in august is going to is going to school and then 
Hey, we have the same channel name. Oh, those other people have the same channel name. I'm trying to find a question. I have autism and ADHD. Uh, to be honest, I help both. Where is the boys today? They're so cute. Thank you. Yes, they are cute. I have level two autism. Cool. Awesome. All right, Clara B says, which national park that you visited was your favorite? Okay, you go first. So I think my favorite national park that we visited was, um, it's a tough call because there were some great ones, but probably uh, Yosemite was my favorite, I think. Um, I loved just the majestic El Capitan Mountain. Um, we actually swam. There's a cool swimming hole um, right by there that we swam for a couple hours. You can see that episode in... Uh, if you search back just on our channel, you can search Yosemite and and see that episode. But the kids all love swimming um, in just the base of beautiful El Capitan and uh, just a relaxing, fun day. I think Ezra, something happened with Ezra too. I can't remember what it was on that one. It was like, I remember in the van if he was, I don't know, there's something on that episode about Ezra. Um, can't remember if he he did something. It was I remember mentioning it's in the autism I, I it's in the autism playlist as well. About. That's but why. the name of that movie, the the video that we did on Yos Yosemite, right? It was um, Mirror Lake. We oh, we yeah. hiked to Mirror Lake, so that's the name is Mirror Lake, and you can see Marie, and there's like a really pretty lake behind her. Even though technically it was dried up when we got there, which was incredibly disappointing because <laughs> we went there in the summer, and I guess that like dries up it's not really like but yeah. it's really, it was still really pretty um yeah Yosemite was fun I don't know if I can really decide because I loved um I loved Maine so try and help me Acadia remember. Acadia National Park um was super nice and it was, I loved it mainly because our spot there was like right on the ocean and we had this gorgeous view and I was like wow I could stay here for a while and then I hurt my foot Remember doing a stupid thing. I was jumping from a rock to a rock while we were picnicking. And I was like, oh, I bet I could jump from there. I'm like, when am I going to grow up? Like, I don't know. I'm like still a little kid inside. And so I jumped and then I really hurt my ankle and I couldn't go on any hikes. And so I like stayed home with Ezra and Simon and Marie. And then you took Benson and Mark. And later when I was editing those hikes that they went on, I was like, okay, I really want to go back. I want to go back and do those hikes because it was like these awesome. cliffs and everything was just ocean and it was so high and everything was so green and pretty. And of course, we, we went to Maine in the summer. So that's probably a lot better. <laughs> it's, it's super cold up there in the winter. But yeah, I really liked Acadia. I think Acadia was definitely one of my favorites. So. And Washington was your yeah. close second. Yeah, that was my favorites until... I went to, to Acadia, and that was Olympic National Park because I really liked the temperate rainforests there. I didn't even know that we had any rainforests in the U.S., and apparently we do, a temperate one. And it was cool. Yeah, that was that was neat. And Mark's favorite was... Mark's behind running the cameras for us. He's right behind so. the cameras. He's got the iPad on. He's switching back and forth the cameras. So what was your favorite? Um... Probably have to say Glacier. Glacier, nice. We just spent, could have spent like a year there. With all the pretty mountains and lakes. That was cool. And then someone's from Ireland. Hi, thanks for visiting us from Ireland. I wonder what time it is in Ireland. I wonder if it's a big time difference. I was wondering about that. I'm like, people on the other That's side true. of the world are going to be like, you're going to make me up, wake, wake up at what? So I don't know. We have to be careful about that with lives. Um, but yeah, Ireland's awesome. I actually have family, like ancestors from Wales and Scotland and Ireland. So it's kind of fun. At what age of understanding is developed in your kids? So I'm guessing like Ezra and Simon, what age are they? So Simon, actually, because he technically has no intellectual delay, his cognitive ability is, is matches his age. He's three. As far as speaking, 
it's more like two years old. Um, but cognitively, as far as understanding, because that's what's your, yeah, understanding, he really understands yeah. most everything yeah. that a three-year-old would. Um, but Ezra, <laughs> oh, Ezra, <laughs> um, cognitively, I want to say two years old. About the, the last time he was like technically evaluated was last year and it was it was about 18 months old, I think, as far as as what we could tell what he understood. Now, of course, I think a lot of times Ezra understands a lot more than he, he lets on. I think a lot more than than we understand that he understands, I guess. Yeah, he's not so, good at communicating that understanding. For yeah, sure. yeah. And so. So it's, it, we really had, a lot of times it's a guessing game, just trying to figure out what he wants and what he likes and stuff. Um, he's pretty good about telling us what he doesn't like. You know, he'll take it and throw it or something. We're like, okay. Well, he li- we even things he likes, though, he throws. I know, so he'll throw throwing's, everything. Throwing's been a problem. It's just so yeah. fun to throw. It's just the, the most fun thing in his in his opinion, <laughs> to throw things. Yeah, even things that he likes and wants, he'll still throw it and then be mad that he threw it. Um yeah. But yeah. He would do that as a baby. Like, he was one year old. And the reason I didn't even remember this until I was editing video. And I was like, oh my gosh, I remember this now. He'd be like sitting at the top of the stairs with me. He was like maybe 18 months old. And he would throw the flip flops like down a couple steps. And then he would start crying. Because he doesn't have them anymore. And then, like, I would go get them and say, okay, Ezra, I'm going to give these back to you. How about you hold them because you know you want them. And I'd try to explain it to him. And he'd grab them and he'd be so happy. And then he'd throw them again. <laughs> and then he would cry. And this isn't just, like, uh, I'm throwing a fit cry. This is, like, the end of the world cry. <laughs> like, it was so sad. I'm like, how is he going to understand? Just, just hold on to them if you want them. And he loved flip-flops. We actually got flip flops for him so that he could hold them in all of his little fingers. Like, it was kind of impressive how many flip flops he could carry around. You just like crawl around with all these flip flops yeah. in his hands. And we would label them so that he wouldn't get them mixed up with the ones that we actually use, you know. Because he'd suck on them too. So <laughs> he'd like, chew on them. So yep. it'd be like, okay, these ones are SRS. So I mean, these ones haven't been in a public restroom before. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> nice to think about. <laughs> Anyway, all right. What's up, everyone? Does Ezra like music? Yes, Ezra loves music. Um, of course, he has his days where he doesn't want me to sing to him. I'll start singing, and then he'll just he'll like put his hand over my mouth like that. I'm like, okay, you don't want me to sing. And it seems like that's more. We noticed that it's weird when he was on medicine, like he would get agitated he by didn't really singing. Like, yeah, music, which is really weird because normally he loved singing and, and loved um holly to sing or piano or yeah any music really i mean he loves it yeah and usually he's motivated for that i remember when we were camping we got some video it was actually when we were at yellowstone um so it was a while back before we started before we went in the rv and everything and we got this video of him signing more and then pointing to my lips and he wanted me to sing so he was like really motivated for me to sing to him and then the medicine that he has been on. He's not like he's not on it today. Usually we don't give it to him, but it's it's mainly more for his ADHD to help him focus. Yeah. Um, but it's just weird how it affects. It affects like his personality of what he yeah. likes and stuff, and then I don't know. It's just I don't really like it, but we we want him to, to be able to focus more and more and more. So. Yeah. Anyway, we're going through that right now. So, yes, he loves music, and. Uh, do you think that a child with <laughs> autism can grow out of it or just progress immensely? It's a great question that Holly's going to answer. <laughs> <laughs> every child is so different. I'm, I can't answer for every single person. Well, I think technically, the technical, like once, I mean, if you're autistic, you're autistic, right? And there's, I mean, you can compass or... Uh, I, I think a lot of people that can, they're like high masking autism. Yeah. They, um, there was quite a few adults that would like comment and stuff. And I've, I've watched TED Talks of adults who are like call themselves high masking autistic people. 
And I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? I think that's more of like kind of what this person is describing. Like they are still autistic, but they're really good at maybe pretending that they're not, I guess. Like they kind of know what, what to do in a social situation, you know, because they've figured it out and they practiced a lot. I really like learning from people who are autistic and hearing their voice and what they have to say because um, because then it's like, it's kind of, they help give my children a voice, you know? I'm like, okay, I like that point of view. I can see Ezra might be thinking that same way too, you know? And so I think that's good to do. And most of the, well, all of the autistic adults that I've ever seen, like watch their channels online or listen to the TED Talks, they're all just like, I am autistic. This is the way I am. My brain works differently. But if I need to in this situation, like a job interview, I can really mask a lot. And so maybe those would be the situations where people might even think or judge him, judge him or her and be like, oh, they grew out of it. Where the person themselves are like, no, I just worked really hard and I practiced a lot. And so during certain situations, I can kind of make it so a lot of people don't realize that they are autistic, I guess. But I think it's it, it's important to like let yourself be autistic when you need to be. Like when I, I guess I'm referring to stimming because it's like you need to regulate yourself in your home and just regulate yourself. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of, um, um, let's see, you said progress. Um, progress immensely. Yeah, yeah, so I mean like as far as speech goes and stuff, like I mean – as far as the things that, you know, as far as the autism goes, there's, there's a beauty of it, right? As I, as we've talked about before, and there's also, you know, those things as far as just, we wish that like Ezra could communicate, right? Um, yes. And I'm and sure he, he feels that way too. I'm yeah. sure it's incredibly frustrating for him that and, he can't communicate. And so that's, you know, that's a goal that we have to help him to be able to communicate. Cause ultimately like all the stems and all those things, we don't care like if our kids stem or like all those things, like even, even a lot of the social s- stuff, like, you know, if they're socially awkward, I mean, whatever, that's like, everyone has their quirks. Everyone is socially awkward. At sometimes I can talk so fast sometimes when I'm telling a story or like overshare and that's so, that's socially awkward. And, and I'm like super extrovert and stuff. And usually have lots of confidence, maybe even overconfident and stuff in social situations. I'm like, everyone, I don't know, everyone has their moments and stuff. So, yeah. so I guess, yeah, people, I, I, I mean, we hope that in, in those areas, I mean, that's our goal is to help our kids just gain as much autonomy as they possibly yeah. can so that they can, they can make their own decisions and they can communicate that to, to us and to the world. Right. And so, um, you know, that's our, that's our main focus and our main goal is to just help, help them get to that, that level where they can live life how, how they want, you know? Yeah. On their terms and, and make their own choices for their life. And I feel like as parents, like once, once we get out of this, oh, I need to help my child not be autistic. Once we get out of that and not, not feel that and get away from that, (laughs) that it's so much easier to just accept your child and to love them unconditionally and then help them gain their most, their best life, whatever that looks like for them. And I'm like, that's something I can do, you know? So hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> but that's just our experience and that's helped us a lot. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to say maybe someone else has a different experience and that's perfectly fine. You know, if someone else says, hey, I was autistic and I grew out of it, I'm not going to tell them that they're wrong. Like, I'm like, well, maybe that's your experience. I don't know. Right. So especially if that's how they feel about it, then they can feel that way about it. Oh, it's, it's not going to offend me. <laughs> I'm not going to be like, mm, I need to prove you wrong. I don't know. I'm not that kind of person. So <laughs> great question. Yeah. All right, what one's next? Where did Marie Mark and Wilson go? Oh. <laughs> they all left. I know it would be way more fun to do this with all of them. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that next time, more of the kids involved. Remember, this is our first live on, on this channel. So oh, since we had, we, no, we've had lives. Oh, you're right. This is our first question and answer. We've yeah. done lives with games. You guys should check those out. Those are really fun. 
We, we've done a couple games. Yeah, so if you search our channel by lives, we've done some games and stuff. Lives are always have been such a pain for us. They always have so many technical difficulties. It's actually pretty difficult. But now we're in an actual home where we have stable internet, so that helps and and whatnot. But um, and we've done it enough that we've. I think finally figured it out We're a little bit. We're getting a little so. bit more confident. But you can check out those other lives because they are live and all the kids are there. So yeah. sorry they're sorry to disappoint you that it's just us. But we're like, <laughs> oh, let's do this where it's actually a question and answer. And it just, I don't know, with all the kids, it might be a little harder. Yeah, but, but we can do that in the future. Well, and, and really, I was thinking, oh, question. with Ezra and Simon, it would be hard. But this person just said Benson, Mark, and Marie. So... Because they'll be able to answer questions. That's true. So we could do that. You guys could put them on the spot. When we do that, we'll do a video on it. <laughs> um, because we'll be learning as we go. And then I have ADHD. Awesome. I, mean, I have several family members, uh, close family members with ADHD. And yeah, it's just part of life. I enjoy watching your videos. Oh, well, thank you. What are your favorite games? And then it lists his favorite games. Oh, they're kind of violent, but that's fine. <laughs> I love games. Okay, that's fun. So we're talking about, um, we, as the whole family, usually we play board games. We usually like board games, but we will play. Do you know what it's called, the game that we played like last Monday? We all played together. Mark, what is it called? With all the different little animals, and then you have to make, it has something to do, I don't know the name. Um, Benson would know. Oh, it's the ultimate chicken horse. Ultimate chicken horse. We will play that game, all found, like our whole family together with, because Simon will take something and just like start acting like, sometimes we'll just hand him a thing, and then we will just like pretend like he's controller. playing. Yeah, controller. Um, and then Ezra will usually just like run around and jump around and watch the, watch what everyone's doing. If we had him in controller, he'll just throw it. So maybe he'll learn how to play someday. But I think that's the only video game that we'll all play together. Oh, except for Mario Kart. We'll play that one too. Um, I always lose. I'm really bad at all video games. Um, I think it has to do with practicing and I just want to find practice. <laughs> So, but we'll play a lot of um, board games. We love, we love board games. Well, I love them. And yeah, I love board games, card games and stuff. Um, so thanks for that question. Ooh, we've got a lot of questions. This is so fun, guys. This is awesome. Okay. I have autism. And oh my gosh, that just breaks I my heart. shouldn't be born. What do I do? So we actually have a cool, a great video that actually the autism family did because we've had that we've had that issue as well where people say people comment that like, like why do you child? have more kids? Yeah, like, if like, you have an autistic child, why would you have another one? Like I'm so, like, is is okay. Ezra's life any less crazy because we have really good internet, so this should be working. Um, but we will put a link in the in this chat, right? Uh, yeah, um, remind us to do that because I'll forget. A link, okay. I will remember. It'll be my responsibility. We'll put a, we'll put in our address if you guys want to send us physical mail, and then we'll also put a link into that chat of the video that the autism family made. So it's actually not our video. Um, the autism family, the Owen family, they're they're awesome. We do a lot of babysitting with them and stuff, um, and we went fishing with them too. But they, they did a video on that about just how um, precious everyone's life is and where life is worth living for everyone and um, and it just positive things about yeah, autism Yeah, really good. Stuff. Just way to think about it. I mean, who's like Ezra or Simon's life is not any less deserving than anyone else just because he can't speak and just because he can't you know, talk and can't communicate and stuff. He gives all of us an opportunity to serve. Um, he, and, he teaches us so much yeah. about what's really important in life. And we've had moments with both of our kids that have really taught us something. And, like, we would not be able to learn with anyone else. Like, we wouldn't have had those experiences without them. And they're such an important part of our family. And people are mean. People are rude. 
most of the time, I mean, some people are just like really mean, but most of the time it's because they, they don't understand. And so it's like, if you don't understand something, if that's new for you, then you're afraid. Then that's when you like just turn to meanness and you're just, it's because you don't understand or you're afraid of something, you know, something new. And so if people aren't around lots of autistic people and aren't used to, you know, serving their autistic kids or something, then that might be new and then they'll just be mean. And I'm really sorry <laughs> that people are mean because they don't have to be. We don't need more meanness in this world. And, um, yeah, we've, we've definitely dealt with that too, of people saying that we shouldn't ever have more kids because it's a high possibility that they'll be autistic. And I was like, oh, so Simon shouldn't live, you're saying. It's, it's really ridiculous and it's just mean, so... I'm sorry about that. How does autism affect skills? Oh, completely different on each person. Yeah. And then she kept, she said if Ezra and Simon have their own AAC device, that will help them communicate. Helps Ezra a lot. Simon. We're trying to not use the AAC device with, not yet. with Simon just because we feel like that he can eventually talk. Um, he and, is saying three words together now. Yeah, so he... We don't want to push something that would hinder his speech. Um, whereas Ezra, I mean, yeah. we've been trying to get him to speak for years and have not uh, been successful. So And we've tried sign with Ezra, too. And that works a little bit sometimes, kind too. Of. But And, I mean, it's really the same with the iPad. I mean, it just kind of depends on his motivation and his... Um, his mood. His mood. And, I mean, a lot of the time, I think the ADHD just takes over and he's just so and he just wound, throws that and wound up. He just broke it. Actually. Yeah, he just broke it. So we just like, had it shattered. shattered the screen completely. We should yeah. do an episode on that actually. Uh, did we even get video of it? I don't think we so. We were just so upset we didn't get video. <laughs> <laughs> we're still not used to like, let's take out the camera. Something dramatic happened or there's drama. Let's take out the camera. Usually we're like, okay, let's fix this. Um, but yeah. So and it's not, I don't know if using a device would really hinder Simon necessarily. It's just I don't think that he'll need it. Yeah. And so we don't want him to teach him another thing that won't be really helpful for him. Yeah. So, so we're focusing on speech, but... Yeah, because yeah, he is improving. Great speech. question. Good question. And how does... Did we answer how does autism mm -hmm. affect skills? It just totally depends on each child. Everyone is so different. Um, because there's some people that doesn't affect skills at all and it just affects more like social things. Of, I mean, yeah, like everyone's, I mean, Ezra, good. Ezra, it was, I mean, even just walking, rolling, like all the milestones of Ezra were just way behind. Yeah. But some with Simon, it wasn't, it wasn't so he, much. He yeah. wasn't, he was pretty early on some milestones too. Yeah. So, but with speech, he, it was very, very late cause he's still working on that. Oh, some people are saying it's freezing. It froze. Hopefully we got it back because now people are asking more questions. We're really sorry about that, but we're working on it. Mark's working on it. What someone said, what shake does he drink? Oh, he has like the strawberry and then chocolate shake that is a meal replacement shake. So it has all the vitamins that you need in a meal. And then we actually add some more cream to it because he that kid is so skinny. He needs more fat. We need to fat him up. Um, and as a dog, he just doesn't want to eat. And so we don't want to do that. And so we try to give him more calories by putting in a little cream. So I know people might not like that, but we're telling you the truth of what we do. And we've tried, and people ask this all the time too, about Ezra and his diet and if we've tried this and that. And we tried we've tried everything. So like many with Ezra. Different diets. If him. it's if it's if it's out there, we've tried it. I mean, um, and we've seen like little improvements with diet stuff. Temporary improvements. Yeah, but and but, then he just goes back. But nothing, even on the diet. Yeah, nothing like nothing earth shattering, you know. With except for the gluten free. Right. Because um, he's yeah probably celiac. Most yeah. likely celiac. So I'm gluten free because I get really bad headaches, and migraines, and a lot of people on my mom's side of the family are celiac have celiac and then Benson's gluten-free and Ezra and Simon are both gluten-free. And so it was actually a really big blessing that we went through that whole gluten-free thing with Benson first because he could tell us exactly how he felt when he was two and he was hurting at night and 
Um, and then when we finally figured out, oh, the gluten is literally turning into poison in your small intestine and hurting you, then it was so simple to fix. It was like almost miraculous. And then um, after we, so Benson was two years old when we found out. And then after about three months later, Benson was like a completely different child. Like his behavior changed so much. All of a sudden he was gaining weight and his digestion was great and everything was working normal again. And so when Ezra came around, then Ezra was acting the same way when he was two, well, like one and a half that, um, that the Benson was. And so we recognized, Hey, Benson was do Benson used to do this same thing. And so even though Ezra couldn't tell us my tummy hurts and this is what's happening, we saw it because we had the experience with Benson. So hopefully that made sense. I wasn't able to edit that. <laughs> so now we just knew, we just took uh, gluten and actually dairy for a while. And then we brought back dairy once he was, his gut was like healed. But we took out gluten and he's a lot better. Yeah. So and we did the whole GAPS diet, the most strict GAPS diet. Yeah, and super did strict. Yeah. Everything and. And it was just really hard. And, and we did, we actually did my, like, mother's milk. I don't know, I mentioned that in one of the videos, but we did that. And that, I think he really liked that. That's good. We would make mother's milk popsicles because I was feeding Simon at the time. And so I had extra milk and we would just, like, freeze it. And that was healthy. He, yeah, it was a good, healthy way for him to get some calories. And <laughs> did that for a while. As long as I could possibly do that. <laughs> All right, next question. People with autism spectrum disorder can live a normal life. So true. Thank you, Emily. That is so true. And you can live whatever life that you want. And that, that's what we're trying to give our children is whatever life they want. We want them to decide. And so that's, that's why we try to help them communicate and stuff like that. So, of course. So the buffering, hopefully it uh, is working now. Let's see. We came back. You guys are the best. Thank you. And you thanks get... for telling us that because it's good to know that we're back because we don't want to just be talking to no one. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the best. Thank you. We love and appreciate you guys yeah. as a community. It's been awesome to see your comments and heart warming and wrenching and at times as, as we you guys share the tough things and the... Yeah. Um, as well as the good things that happen. So, and I think it's like if if people are willing, I think that it is important in any kind of community to show some kind of level of vulnerability. You know, to show like, hey, this is hard. This is challenging. It's not all butterflies and rainbows. I feel like on social media, especially, it's very tempting to just only show the like picturesque or the perfect, and so then. When I get on Instagram, I'm like, how come everyone's in Hawaii, you know? And I'm like, they're not all. world are we not well oh we're back okay we're back um next one we got another testimony sorry it's it keeps moving i wonder if there's a way we can make the chat not move um so it's right here oh michelle says not sure if my son has autism as it came back inconclusive about and then, ago. and then got another test this Monday to see if he has autism. Oh, so you're still waiting on it. It does. He doesn't talk to adults. And put and hands in his mouth a lot. He's seven years old. One thing we just did a video on uh, diagnosis, right? Is that what it was called? Or we did a like several videos the about assessment. Yeah, several videos yeah. about diagnosis. If you haven't seen those ones, those ones are really good to check out um, because uh, we actually go to Dr. Spendlove, who actually is the one who diagnosed Simon, 
Yeah, he's a autism. pediatric clinical psychologist. And he actually helped write the ADOS, and so the second one. he knows his stuff. Um, he does. <laughs> and and so it, he, one thing that he mentioned in there, if you don't get what you want out of your evaluation or you don't feel like it was you know good enough, um, call and complain and ask more questions and or get a second opinion. Um, because yeah, not all doctors are created equal for sure. And so I mean, just like anything, like not all lawyers, not all therapists, not yeah. all agents, real estate agents. Don't get me on. I'm more not even going to talk about that. But like, and doctors for sure. They're not, you, you got to find one that, that is a good fit. So it's, it seems like she's still waiting for the second one. And he's seven years old and doesn't talk to adults. I wonder if he talks to other, like, does he talk to peers or does he talk to you guys? that there is there is something out there that is very rare but it's called selective mutism um and that's where it's like they really understand everything but they have a hard time talking on the spot to people that they don't know um i have a friend who has a son that's like that but it just came to mind it's like oh he doesn't talk to adults um but i hope you get answers because sometimes that is the hardest part is the not knowing and once you get answers it's like okay now we have something we can work with we can make goals. We, we know how to help. And that was really important with Ezra when we found out he had apraxia because we actually changed his therapies completely because we're like, oh, now we realize you're having a really hard time with your apraxia speech, with speech. And so we shouldn't like withhold stuff for you to say a certain word and things like that. So we, we it was good to know that diagnosis so that we could really just make something that works better for him. So Ezra and Simon's favorite places, Ezra's favorite favorite places that we went to was definitely the caves, right? Because he was just laughing every time we would go inside of a cave. We went to three caves on the National Park tour that we did. And, and yeah, he was just loving them. And you can see, like, we went to Wind Caves, we went to um, Mammoth Caves that we have not edited yet. So that's not out. Um, but the best one I think is out and it's the Carlsbad caves. Those were cool. It was cool because we didn't have to wait on anyone. We could just go on our own terms and we didn't have to go with a tour and Ezra loved the caves. He also pooed his pants in the caves. That was exciting. In both of them, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which. There, it's always exciting. Whatever no, we do. It's, there's no bathroom in one of them. It was, uh. The wind caves. Oh, that was bad. Yeah. That was one of our first movies. I'm sorry if it's not edited very well. I was still learning. I mean, I am still learning, but... but yeah, that was bad. So that was bad. I had to run back because we actually, we didn't even have a diaper with us or anything. We, Nothing. Because we were literally late, almost late to the cave tour, and you couldn't, like, book it again. It was busy, and so... And it was so expensive. I had to run fast back to the car, and we finally got the diapers yep. and wipes and... Uh, you got there right in time. No, like, I wasn't going to go in there without we you. We just got in the end of the line and just Which was good. changed it at the end. It was, And there were, there were thankfully, trash cans in there, so we had a place to put the poopy diapers, but that happened to both kids. Yeah, anyway. Exciting but Simon's, what's caves. Simon's favorite place? It's hard because Simon was so small yeah. when we went. I think he, he loved... He was one year old when we left. He loved the water. He loved... Anything um, with water. He yeah. loved the ocean. Oh, yeah, if you haven't seen our Dry Tortugas National Park one, that was really cool. Um, I think he really liked that. He was out in this... We actually went snorkeling with all of them out in the ocean. Um, we weren't planning on it. I Like, we were planning on taking turns, and then Adam was out there, and I was like, okay, it's my turn. And so I went out there, and Adam was supposed to stay, like, on the beach with Ezra and Simon, and then all of a sudden, like... I'm snorkeling with the three older kids and I look over and then my babies are like floating towards me. I'm like, excuse me. We are like out in the ocean right now. There could be, anyway, it was great. <laughs> it was fine. Awesome. I did get scared there for a second. What, what, what's that called though? What did we call that video? Um, it was like first time in the ocean or I think yeah. it was autistic brothers. First time in the ocean. Something like that. Something like that. Um, but that was fun. Go snorkeling. And yeah, Simon, that, it was a good idea to bring him out because then they could be with everyone. And, and they did fine. They, yeah. they had their life jackets. They're just floating. They didn't get eaten by barracudas. They didn't get eaten by barracudas, even though there was a barracuda. <sighs> it's fine. 
fine. We survived. <laughs> and we don't do dangerous things with our kids, just for the record. Um, but it was, yeah, they had a lot of fun. And so, yeah, that's probably what Simon liked the best was swimming, anything with water. Um, the next one. Do you have a friend code on the Nintendo Switch? I don't know. I'm Nintendo Switch. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to get back to you on that one. Yeah, Benson, he does that stuff. He's really the only one who is gaming and stuff like that. Yeah, he's into Nintendo. Uh, my son starts school in September. I saw the video of Simon starting school. How was his first day and his social interaction with other kids? You know, I don't really know about social interaction with other kids because I wasn't there for that. But in the fall, they're going to let me let the, um, or have the different parents come and help out. And so I'll keep you updated on that. We, I'll probably get more video too of that because he, that's the thing with social interaction. Like he'll go up to a kid one time at the park when we were visiting family in Idaho. He went up to this little kid, like 18 month old and just pushed him down. It was so sad. And then he looked at him and went, hi, hi, hi. And I was like, oh, does he even realize that he's crying because he pushed him down? Like, And so he he does sometimes have a hard time understanding, like, oh, that wasn't very nice of me. But I think it's fun to push each other down sometimes, you know, rough house. So he's still learning that. I don't I don't know how we did social interaction-wise. Because I didn't ask about that specifically. So. But he did love it. Oh, but he yeah, loved it. He loves, he loves school, so that's Yeah, good. and he does love his friends. Like, he does, like, at church, he just goes right in, and, and he's getting better at sharing. So he's just, he's improving. So we'll see. We'll see how he does. And all those kids are also autistic as well. So I think everyone's just kind of in the same boat. And <laughs> yeah. And what I love about that group is the parent group. Because the parents, it doesn't really matter what happens these parents are not going to judge each other <laughs> because they all have autistic children. We're like, no judgment there. Like your kid smack my kid. No worries. It happens. It's like, anyway, I like that attitude. So, all right, next one. <laughs> my son is mildly autistic and I'm, I worry about how he'll be with other kids. Yeah. I, I feel you. <laughs> When I saw him, when I saw Simon push the other kid down and then say, hi, hi, hi. It was like, uh, okay, where do I start? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's definitely something that we have to practice. I think, um, sorry, I'm talking a ton. I think having, our, <laughs> in Simon's case, he's lucky to have older siblings that can, mm -hmm. he gets a lot of training and interaction with them, which is really good. Um, but if you didn't have that, then, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's practice, right? And it's the more, the more you can, I think, be in those situations, obviously the more he can learn, he or she learn and, and, uh, grow, but, um, but definitely something that's, it's going to be a work in progress, right? To understand those, um, social interactions. We actually did, a, another video about chat G P T. Um, and, or is it, did I say it wrong, Mark? GBT. <laughs> we gotta look for And, one. and, uh, and just talking about how, like, now kids, I mean, and people with autism, if you don't understand the interaction, you can even just type it in and, and, uh, like, hey, my girlfriend said this, what should I say back? What and did she really what mean? What did she really mean? And, and it's surprisingly accurate. Yeah. So, those social interactions are things that, um, yeah, it's just, I think, gonna take time and every kid's going to learn at a different pace and you know we hope that um doing having like our channel out there and other channels about autism will help people be give people more grace and more yeah just um, be more understanding understanding uh and and really see kind of what simon and ezra are going through um, see their side see their side yeah. because the more people who who are understanding and and and, and can and understand what to, how to react to say Ezra, because uh, Ezra's going to be a, a, a long, a long-term thing of, uh, I mean, right now he still has, he doesn't like him and other kids, like he'll just, I don't, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> he just, 
and who knows? He he probably does understand a lot more, but he treats Ezra treats other people kind of like they're objects sometimes. Yeah. Um, it's just if you have something in your hand, I think it's mine now. Like, and it's like okay, there's he has a hard time with sharing and things like that. One thing that I really liked that I learned from Temple Grandin, and she's definitely more um, mildly autistic. She's extremely intelligent and has done a lot for like animal rights and stuff. So look her up because she's amazing and she's she's autistic. And she said that when she was young, her mom would bring her friends over. So this is her mom's friends. There are other adults who knew about her daughter and about what she was going through. And she would have her daughter serve them. And then she would teach her, okay, and you say this, and this is polite to say, and this isn't polite to say. And she would practice on her mom's friends. And her mom's friends were very obliging and kind because they they're her friends and they wanted the daughter to do well too socially and she said that she hated it <laughs> she was like she's like why do i have to do this why do i have to give them cookies and, and and have polite conversation and learn how to do this it's silly you know but she said that she was grateful later because she realized oh this actually is a skill that i need to learn and it's difficult also there was another way a family member was teaching her son so the mom and the son were sitting and watching a TV show. And it was a TV show that was interesting for the son. And so he was watching it and then she'd pause it. And then she'd go, okay, what's happening right now? Look at their facial expressions. How are they feeling? And then she would like turn it into a learning experience to teach her son and her son's like 12 years old and he's going, cause he, he's autistic. I don't know if I mentioned that. And he's going, I think that one's mad. And I think that guy's jealous. And she'd be like, okay, that's good. That guy is mad, but that one isn't jealous. That one. And so she would explain like that body language or that facial expression. That means this. And she, and they would do that all the time by watching videos. And, and so I don't know if that would be helpful too, but in both ways, the parent proactively teaching a child and it really helped them. So hopefully, the, you know, maybe you can get an idea from that. Or try a different idea too. It's always hard, you know, when they're more independent too, because maybe they don't want to do it. But they're like, I don't want to watch a TV show with mom. Who knows? But hopefully, those are some ideas to just throw out there. Let's see, which one are we on? I don't know. It went up Let's again. See, that one. Uh, I bought three, three iPads, iPads before a phone. phone, and then what? What oh, what medications? Well, so we'll keep you posted on that because right now we're on no medication because we don't. Um, and Simon we, has never been on Simon's medication. Simon's never been on medication. Um, and so, I mean, we've done a lot of like diet things and gut things and vitamins and probiotics and all sorts of that stuff. Yeah. But, like and I said, enzymes. No real silver bullet to, to give you um, other than... With, with the medicine, we're still working, especially for Ezra, because I feel like he really needs something. So we actually have another doctor's appointment uh, the first this next yeah. month. It takes forever to get uh, get those doctor's appointments. But, but we're going to try and get something to help the ADHD. Cause, it's ADHD that he's medicated for, yeah, not, not. Because the, cause that's just, I think, his struggle. So I think every 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 child's different, and you just really have to try and figure it out. Um, trial and yeah. error and, and meet different doctors and yeah go, um, go to like a pediatrician that or not to a, a pediatrician, special well pediatrician at first and then pediatric refer, psychiatrist, psychiatrist that's yeah. what we're saying pediatric psychiatrist and um so yeah right now yeah and we really haven't had the best of luck with yeah we've tried even things the other ADHD and, yeah. medicine we've done but nothing that's like for autism so right because it's well, just been guanfacine I think was for Ticks, that, that, oh, ticks yeah. and autism, which that that made him so tired. Yeah, it makes him really tired. So the side effects is the the main problem. It's like, oh, what's There's better, the side effects side or the yeah. no? Though if we find something that works, but right now we're on no medicine. Right now, I don't know if we would even like say, oh, this medicine would be good. Like, I don't think we because we haven't really had the best of luck. With, yeah, well, the, the side effects have been worse than the yeah. uh, than the benefits. So. And sometimes it was good for a little while, but then long term we're like, no, this we can't do this. Yeah. So. Uh, it's good for like three days, and then 
after that we're like, no, this isn't good. Um, so this one, right? Okay, yeah. Does Simon have any sensory issues? Is he a picky eater? Does it not manifest in his autism? Does it not manifest in mild autism? I would say that he's a picky eater. He's a eater. pretty picky eater. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, we have to call everything chicken. <laughs> and then he might try it. Like, it doesn't even matter what it is. It's like, oh, there's some chicken. Let's dip it in Chick-fil-A sauce. <laughs> and it could be something completely different that he's never tried before. Usually he'll take the meat out of whatever it is. Like, we had lasagna. And one time he ate the noodles. I think he was just really, really hungry that day or something. But usually he'll separate everything and only eat the hamburger. He's just a little meat eater. Um, he does like eggs, which that's another protein. I don't know. Um... Yeah, not vegetables though. He's not He's a really bad. Ezra's eating a vegetable. great vegetable eater though. He'll eat broccoli like crazy usually. Yeah, he and, will. Um, I mean, Ezra's actually has a cleaner diet than most people, um, especially in the past. I mean, he's had a perfect diet for a long time. Yeah, they they both like rice and they both like potatoes. So that's kind of the starch fillers that we usually use. And yeah, yeah, it doesn't. I don't know. So does it manifest as mild autism? I mean, yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, and then does he have any sensory issues? Yes, Simon has um, a big issue with smells. Yeah. He's super sensitive to smells. And he likes good smells too, like like with my hair. And he'll just smell it go... <sighs> and he'll just like relax. He'll just relax every morning. I mean, it really every opportunity he can get. But every morning when I wake him up, he just wants to smell my hair. Especially if I've just taken a shower and like, I don't know, smells like shampoo or something. I'm like, it doesn't even smell like anything. And he'll just sit there and smell it. And so he likes smells, but he also, anything strong, he doesn't like. What was it that I made the other day? The cauliflower steaks. And I like grilled them and, and yeah, that, he was not having it. He couldn't even be in the kitchen. Like yeah. he couldn't even be in the room because the cauliflower just smelled so bad to him. And he'll just, yeah, he'll go, ah, and then he'll like put his hands over his, his no. nose and just like run away. So that's probably his biggest one. Yeah. That affects it the most, sensory-wise, so, yeah. Like some people with severe autism have self-injury similar to, uh, Lichus syndrome, which is cerebral palsy self-injury. Yeah, um, so Ezra has a little bit of that as far as, like, he used to try to hit his head a lot, um, and that was... The safety beds helped the that. The safety beds helped that, um... Because you do it at night, usually. Yeah. And so, you want to talk a little bit about how to help that? What else have we done to help? Um... Well, whenever there's any kind of destructive behavior, whether it's hurting them or someone else or hurting things that you don't want to get hurt, like furniture or something, then the best thing is to try and find a replacement. To ask, like, why are they doing that? What is motivation? And a lot of neurotypical kids will be motivated by attention. Like, I did really dumb things. I would, like, lie all the time just because I wanted to get in trouble because I wanted that attention from, like, my mom. And so it's like, anyway, I was kind of a dramatic child. But kids will do that. They're like, they'll, you can go into more of a, hey, you don't do that. We do this instead. And then try and give them attention other times. Not only when they're being good, but when they're just doing nothing. And that's the whole thing. It's like, I give you attention because I love you unconditionally. And not just when, I'm not only giving you attention when you're doing good things. And that's important to give them attention when they're just like sitting there watching TV. They're not doing anything good or bad. Um, that's important to give them that love and attention even when they don't feel like they've earned it. It's like, you don't have to earn it from me. This is unconditional. And that helps with that if any kind of uh, good... So an example of this was when Ezra was three years old, he would, he just got into this, um, this is what he did. He would push down every chair and every stool and push down every piece of, try to push down furniture that like he couldn't, but he would try to, and he would move the furniture. And I'm like, why is he doing this? He wasn't doing it for attention. And then he was doing it because he wanted to, like, hear a big noise, and he and he would laugh. And so what we did was, we got him just empty milk cartons. We just kept them, like really big gallon ones, and 
we let him throw those. And, you know, I washed them out and stuff, so there was a milk everywhere. And he would throw those, and it would make a loud noise, and he would laugh. And so, for, like, a month... We should actually do that again. <laughs> for a month, we had, like, ten milk jugs on the floor in our house, and we just left them there, because then it was... He was, could just... It was easily accessible, and he could just grab one and throw it. And then that would fulfill that need, whatever need he had, um, to make that noise or to throw something. And then he he let... He just let um the let alone you know the other stuff the the big chairs and stuff you just let that alone so yeah and a lot of that's things, a replacement yeah and a lot of another thing is like proactively so like giving Ezra compressions and noogies and I and guess. stuff like wrestling with him before bed that helps him to not uh, want to hit his head and stuff like yeah. that because he's getting that he's stimu- getting that, that compression stimulation another way, way um through wrestling and stuff um so doing proactive things like that um helps too so that's just our experience with trying to replace items for stimulation in guys- another way ever gonna start a gaming channel i think benson might someday oh, yeah this is mr pro gamer benson might yeah. He might. When he gets a little older and he can start a channel that doesn't have to be a kid channel. Let's see. Another crash. I know. Yeah. They're all good. I'm so... Like, we have good internet, people. Like, this should not happen. Yeah. It's I don't... just crazy. Anyway. <laughs> uh, How see. quick are assessments over at the U.S. and the U.K.? We could wait up to four years? Wow. What? Do Simon and Ezra like music? Okay. We just did a video on that. Yeah, so check out the assessment. Um, it's an autism assessment. Autism right? assessment. Yeah, there's several actually on there. How early really can you diagnose and stuff like that? So that. But as far as waiting list, though, I think that's the real question: is like, what's the waiting list in the U.S.? It totally depends on where you are. So if you're more in a rural area, like you have to travel, and it will be a longer waiting list as well. Like. Um, Simon. Usually like a year is like long though. Yeah, that's, that's long. That's long. Yeah. Um, Ezra was three months. And then Simon was a little longer, but I think that was because we were in the RV. So I think with Simon, it was six months we waited. But we didn't, probably didn't have to wait that long. It was just timing wise. So it's just like a handful of months, a few months probably. Um, I don't know where though in other places in the U.S., we're kind of, the, we're like in the Midwest. Is that where we are? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I grew up in California, so we're really west over there. But um, but if you're in the city where there's a lot more doctors and just a lot more people, then you don't have to wait as long. Yeah. That's crazy that I have to wait that long in the UK. That's All crazy. right. I got to get sorry. going to work, so we got to finish up here. So. I could talk forever. <laughs> um, this. Did Simon, that one? Did Simon and Ezra like music? Yeah, they both like they music. They both love music, yep. Simon likes specific songs, and Ezra, when he's not on medication, he really likes old music. Nice. And then, did you know Julia from Sesame Street has autism? Awesome. Bruno, the. Yes, I did know that. Bruno from Thomas has autism. Yes. Yes. We, we, we knew that because that, that was a big deal when, that, when those came out. I like that they do that. And of course, there's always going to be, you know, like, oh, they're stereotyping something. But the thing is, is that the more people have, the more shows that have um, examples of autism, then it's less stereotypical because you have all these different examples. So I really like that they're doing it. My family's in Costa Rica right now. We have been living here since Father's Day. We're here. We like, we are here for like five weeks. Then we go back to Oregon. Oregon is so pretty. I can totally live in Oregon. And like a week later, we're going to Canada. Ooh, you guys are going all over the place. How do you get Ezra to take medication? My three-year-old grandson won't take medication. Um, usually it's liquid. So usually, well, and like his guampa seem that he won't, he won't take and oh, yeah, without that's it. So we always put it with, uh, we disguise it in something that he likes. So it'll be, if he likes string cheese right now, that's his thing. So... We'll wrap the pill up in the string cheese and typically do the first so he's hungry and he'll, he'll right, bite right it and be like, 
ah, I didn't really like that, but then give him another piece, you know, real quick, and and that's how we get yeah. get you him can also, to eat medicine. Like, put him in shakes, or if, you, if it's liquid, you can put him in a like chocolate milk or something that's really motivating. Just what does he like, and then mix and it then in with try that. Try and hide it. Yeah, there's just some ideas from experience we've had. Yeah. I don't know if they'll work, but you could try them. <laughs> My family travels the world, been over 18 countries, awesome, and I can just been. So we have only been in the United States, but we went all over it, all the national parks in the United States. I bet well, I the mean, national parks in... With our whole family. Yeah, with our whole family. We've been outside the United States, but not with, like, the kids. Yeah. National parks in Costa Rica are beautiful, I bet. Yeah. Costa Rica is expensive. Um, yeah, we'll have to go visit Costa Rica. My parents went there because they travel a ton. My grandson has Lyme disease, and it's a battle oh, no. to get him to take the meds. Yeah, I bet that's. Uh, I bet it is. I bet that's really hard. That's very. My difficult. sister has a has a friend with Lyme disease, and with her, it was really hard. It took like seven years to figure out why she was sick, and to figure out that it was Lyme disease. And then after that, it was like, oh, it's not like this is an easy fix. You can't fix it. So, I'm really sorry you have to go through that. Taken, but yeah, I guess just what we said before. If there's any way you can hide him, he probably knows he has to take him. Though <laughs> he probably like knows it's like you're just trying to hide him in a chocolate shake or something. I also have autism very mild. Mom has cool. My mom's phone and sunglasses were stolen. What at Costa Rica? Let's see, uh, special engineering, the self injuries. Oh, yes, yeah. so special headgear, yeah. Yes. That could be good for head injuries. That can help. What sounds are Ezra and Simon oversensitive to? They're not really, they're really good actually most of the time with sounds. That's not a thing really that bugs them. Except lots of people. Thankfully. If we're in a crowd, Ezra will just go la 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 yeah. la 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 simply because we're in a crowd. Yeah, but it's not. It's not like he throws a tantrum or anything because of it. He doesn't have a meltdown. Yeah, he doesn't have a meltdown. Like he'll, he'll just go, little, 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 little. He'll do that. Because it's like a cute little sound that he makes. He'd rather listen to his own sounds than other people's sounds. Um, Our summer plans are to work hard. We were going to have a, a baby, but we had a miscarriage. And so that was... That was sad. That was sad. But... Um, so we're working. We might do a trip to California. Um, to visit my parents and my family. To visit Holly's parents. We'll see. Still kind of planning that out. Um, we just kind of like living in a house again. <laughs> does it ever <laughs> happen that they laugh for no reason? Oh, that's Ezra. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's just be laughing Ezra. like crazy sometimes. That's his life. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he... he He'll laugh a lot, especially when he's... Uh, well, that disappears with the medicine, though, so that's why we... I know. He always misses the noises and his laughs when yeah. he's medicated. So, yeah, he will. He'll laugh seemingly for no reason. I'm sure he has a really good reason. Like, I'm sure whatever he's thinking about is hilarious. But we're just <laughs> like, we don't know because we can't get into your mind. So, yeah, he laughs a lot. Well, thank you guys so much. For I think that's it. Joining Great. us on this live. This is fun. We'll do it again. Um, I think. So, yeah, I can do this again. Okay. I can do this all day. So yeah, let us know if you liked it and uh, if it was helpful. And we will talk to you guys again soon. Holly's doing a video tomorrow about... Uh, what is it about? A day in the life. In the summer. In the summer. Day in the life in the summer. So, I'm working on it tonight, actually. Kind of put that one off. But it'll be up tomorrow. So we will see you guys soon. And next time, we'll just have to figure out this internet thing. I don't know. It's crazy. Just like, I don't know why it don't just know went why. in so and out. Sorry and about that. We're sorry. But at least it did come back every time. Yeah, hopefully the video's not in like 10 different videos. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll do as much research as we can and we'll look and... Oh, thank you. Someone says amazing family. You guys are amazing. Yeah. From Argentina. Argentina. Awesome. I just thought of the song. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Anyway, sorry. All right. <laughs> I got to go to work. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much. This we'll was really ya. fun. Thank you so much for coming on.
we're gonna end the stream. End the stream.